Today we are going to do another GPU overclocking and undervolting tutorial. I will guide you through the steps in order to overclock the RTX 3070 graphics card as well as how you can undervolt the GPU and make it more efficient. Before we begin, you should know the following. By pure overclocking, you will gain more performance in exchange for more heat and power draw. By undervolting the GPU, you will reduce heat and power draw while maintaining about the same performance and in some cases you could even gain performance. You could also combine these two and have better overall performance with less heat and power draw, which will heavily depend on the GPU, and is something I will also show you in this video. Before we begin with overclocking, we will do some benchmarking on stock settings, changing only the fans to 65%, which we will keep through all the tests in order to make it a fair comparison. You will need MSI Afterburner, Hardware Info, and a GPU benchmarking software or just use a game you already have. So, the RTX 3070 on stock settings gave us 20,355 points in 1080p and 13,614 points in 1440p resolution. Running the DLSS benchmark at 4K resolution, we see the FPS going from 17 frames native to 49 frames per second. During benchmarks, the core clock was not stable as we see here, and that is due to the limited 220 watts TDP. The card was trying to maintain that number which caused an unstable core clock. Now, if we adjust only the power limit to max, meaning that the GPU can exceed its rated TDP, we will have a higher power draw, but the core clock will become more stable and it will perform slightly better. I would suggest doing only this step if you are not willing or maybe afraid to OC the card. It is basically free performance you are missing on, and it works with many GPUs. Now let's move on to overclocking using MSI Afterburner and running the benchmark in window mode. Before we start we increase power limits and we move to the VRAM clock. We increase plus 100 megahertz and apply each time until it crashes or starts showing artifacts, and then we go lower in order to find a stable overclock. Moving on to core clock, we set plus 10 megahertz and apply. For each step, we go 10 megahertz higher until we hit a crash or start seeing artifacts, and then go down 10 to 20 megahertz that should be our stable clock. You basically need to adjust until the GPU runs stable. We managed to get the GPU stable at plus 110 MHz core clock and plus 1000 MHz memory clock. This RTX 3070 is already overclocked from the factory, so we didn't have much room to play with. Doing a rerun we got this time 22103 points in 1080p and 14765 points in 1440p, which is over 8% increase in pure performance. Testing DLSS 2 with an overclock, we had about 7% in gains, but worth mentioning is the difference DLSS does as we can see here. Comparing the FPS, temperatures and power draw, we see how overclocking affects the performance and efficiency of the GPU. On the one hand, it increases the performance, and on the other hand, it runs a bit hotter, which may be a problem in some GPUs. Let's try now and undervolt the GPU, and see how much of a difference it makes and if you should rather undervolt this graphics card. We will try to keep as close as possible to stock performance and see how that goes. Now, undervolting is a bit trickier than overclocking and it requires more effort. We start by reading the max core voltage and GPU clock during the stock benchmarks. Once we know these values, we open the curve editor and click on the square corresponding to a lower voltage increment by around 25 millivolts. We press the up arrow key till the square corresponds to your stock core clock. Then we select every square point on the right by holding shift and pressing enter. This will move them down or up as required making sure they are on the same frequency and save this profile. We need to do that along with a running benchmark and continue going 25 millivolts down each time. On this GPU, we achieve to go down to 875 millivolts while staying very close to our stock boost clock. What you may notice is that although you set the value lower, the V-Core may increase by a bit. Testing in 1080p, we got 19899 points, which is very close to stock. And as you see here, the FPS performance was also very close. What we also see is how power draw and temperatures dropped. We have a much more efficient card with almost the same performance. Now we will try to combine undervolting with overclocking. As a rule of thumb, we take half the OC values and with a bit higher V-Core. That gave us 14,076 points in 1440p, which is more than stock. You could try to increase the V-Core, core clock as well as the VRAM clock, and see if you could extract some more performance. Here we can see the performance compared to stock, overclocked and undervolted, as well as the temperatures and power draw. We see the significant difference undervolting does to power draw. 
which dropped from 220 watts to an amazing 175 watts, which is 20% lower, while maintaining basically the same FPS performance. Overclocking we had of course the best performance but also much higher power draw and temperatures. Now which method you will use and how far you can go is up to you. In my opinion, undervolting combined with overclocking works better than pure overclocking. We still gain some performance with much less power draw and temperatures. So that was it for today. If you liked the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to our channel for more overclocking videos, and share it with your friends. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. See you on the next one.